Well, let me ask you a question about that and then ask everybody to come in on this, on this question. So you've all talked about infrastructure at some, at some level, whether it's human infrastructure or technology or you know, uh, resources, natural resources. What has, what's the infrastructure requirements that you've seen in going to grounds you know, versus being centralized at the top of going to ground? And I wonder if, as all four of you would think about, does the infrastructure have to be thought about nationally only? I mean, should we be thinking about these approaches regionally uh, and even regionally outside of Africa? So, Robert, do you think about um, um, an axis from Paris to African countries and that are focused on patients that then have to have infrastructure all along? How, how do you think about infrastructure in this case and how, as you think about scaling innovation, how should we think about organizing infrastructure going forward? Why does it only have to be national or should it be beyond that? Of, of course, maybe Robert will say more. But, on, but I don't think that the infrastructure or health facilities must make a difference. Mm. Of course, we need at all levels, at all low level, at district level, at regional level, and at national level. But I don't think it's the people. The human resources are key to make a difference, right. to improve the health of the people. You can have a beautiful hospital, what we call in French, Elephant Blanc, big with everything. But if you don't have the right, pe the right person, the right doctor, the right nurses, the, the right midwife, so at the training, right, training for at you the right it? place, <coughs> the, the health of the people will not be improved. Yeah. That is my understanding of the, the, you know, the, what we should do in Africa, making sure that we have the people to do the job. Others? Well, I would, I would go along and say um, one of the things that we haven't mentioned, which I think is very important, is that 85% of most of our patients at any level have usually consulted a traditional healer before coming into the health system mm -hmm. itself. So if we're going to devise a system, as you describe here, which is excellent, you have people thereby who actually understand this, and uh, at least potentially, and um, perhaps uh, can incorporate their knowledge of that, as well as the traditional healers themselves at some level, where it's regulated, of course, <laughs> and genuine, uh, into the mainstream um, medical system. Because I find that oftentimes we, we speak as medical people as though those people, i.e. the traditional leaders, are messing up what we're trying to do. And in fact, that's not entirely true. There are some cases, there are some illnesses, there are some conditions where it's really important to work hand in hand with the traditional healers. And I think where you have a national program that takes into account the relevance of, national, uh, of traditional healers in the family life, and then you have women who are part of the community who of course assume that this involvement yeah. has taken place, I think that makes for a more effective um, a pr a practice That's of medicine. Yes. Nardos and then Robert. Yeah. I think from my perspective, I kept on saying the ecosystem. We need to have an ecosystem. What do we mean by ecosystem? If a country knows the disease burden, for example, it has to produce the skills that are necessary for that. It has to produce all the infrastructure that you require for that. And this infrastructure should not be a standard one. Mm -hmm. It should be a differentiated one. And we change this over time. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Um, you know, in, in South Africa, for example, we have supported the CSIR, which is a Council for Science, uh, Innovation, and Research. And working with the Cape Town University, we have turned the biomedical engineering students to be designing, you know, the medical uh, equipments that the country requires. So we have come out with an asthma, uh, equipment by one of the students, which is really something that you can squeeze, easy squeeze, as my thing. We have got, come out with an information technologies like Mom Connect, HIV Connect, and all this. 
where people subscribe and they share information. Uh, but we have the most important thing is the Envy flow uh, where a device where people can go and be detected, like you said, you know, mammogram and all these mobile, yeah. uh, portable things. Yeah. So these are students. You know, we have got the young generation whose DNA is technology. You know, our children come out and they're so scattered, you know. So, you know, we just have to empower them and make sure that the environment is compatible with the needs of the society. So, you know, linking the two is very critical. The other thing when you talked about sub-regional, when I was in Kenya and we developed this cross-border initiative, there is no need for countries where the borders are there to have one hospital in Kenya, another hospital just 100 meters yeah, exactly. in Ethiopia. It doesn't make sense. The economies of scale. So you know what you do is you have the primary you know centers there and taking you know advantage of the reference hospital there. So you know we have to be very strategic in the way we invest, you know. And and you know we should think, you know, this is a global world. It's borderless when it comes to problems. To s when it comes to solutions, we have to make it also borderless. It and enjoy the economic Flexible system. and dynamic infrastructure yes. design, yeah. Robert. And then we're gonna take a couple of questions from the audience and, and um, wrap it up. So regarding infrastructure, um, think global, act local. So this is what Paul Kagame told us yesterday. Uh, he benchmarked essentially with yeah, other did. good practices. So uh, there is no one good solution. You have to think global and act uh, local. Now regarding the, the actors, it's difficult to think that you will deliver good health care in a failed state. It's, the state shall continue to play a key role, there is no doubt about that. But to me, the key answer is pragmatism. You can have the state, you can have academic, you can have private sector, you can have uh, donors. The, it should be pragmatic, but this is my last thing, is again accountability. So deliver, be, be sure that whatever the plan, you follow up on execution and that at the end of the day you've got execution, local execution. This is really key. And from the beginning to build a plan where you go from the vision to the plan and then to follow up on execution because there are too many stories that we heard about this Elephant Blanc, a nice hospital, nobody's inside. And so this of course is discouraging for the actors. Yeah.